Hi there! And welcome to an exciting video for me to make because this is stuff that has helped my spirituality and my spiritual journey like in a really strong a strong way and um I think that you know in the end of the day we are all spiritual beings and whether you believe what you are or not you know whether you believe something is or not it doesn't matter it still is it's just you're not consciously aware of it and that my friends is where your journey will begin so remember it's in your consciousness so if you want to like if you want to go somewhere and you want to experience that then start consciously like noticing things more like and that will bring it out in your life and the more you think about it and the more you, you allow it in your life um and you don't <laughs> sit there and deny it the more you'll see it numbers numbers are a big big thing and it's really exciting what i've learned on my journey it's like it baffles my mind what like we can create and what we can set ourselves and intend for ourselves to do and that's where these things come in and you know first i'm going to take something because this helps me a lot like i think your mind is one thing that you really have to work on to help you like get to that place <laughs> I just got these and they're so good. <laughs> yeah. From Natural Vitality, they're calm. Calm gummies. They're so good. And for they're for good for anti-stress. Mmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mmm. Yeah. Stuff like this can help your mind to be at peace. Like, it's something I really need help with because, y'all know, I got stress. I deal with a lot of weirdos. And so when you deal with people, you have to, like, guard your mind. And hmm, they're sticky people, so, <laughs> yeah, that's... Just so you know, that's sticky. But yeah, um, guard your mind and your heart and your soul against people that want to bring you down and do bad. And I actually learned something today about myself. <laughs> I'm always looking at things spiritual-wise. But I came across this one article about empaths. Um, I might do a whole video on empaths and stuff eventually. But um, I'm an empath. And my name is Lisa Hunt. Welcome to I'm Past Anonymous <laughs> 101. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but it should be a support group for us. Shoot. Us people, we take on all the crap in, in the whole world. Like, for people especially that can't handle it yet. You know, that are not... I'm not going to say they're, like, lesser than. But, um, they're just not at that level. I should say. And, you know, there's a lot of people that haven't gotten there yet. And that's in their experience. So, you know, I don't I don't think any part of your journey is bad. As long as you're on that journey toward being the better, best you you can be. I think that people that, you know, start with that small little glimmer of open-mindedness, they're going to go somewhere else. And, you know, I don't try to push my religious beliefs on people anymore. I did when I was Christian. And I thought other people, you know, were had to believe that way. Because it's your taught, you know. And it's closed. It's very closed and very rigid. And I never really liked being that way. Like, I always, even when I was in high school, I loved looking at dreamology books and um, psychic phenomenons and universal 
things out in the universe like I love those little mind books too that had those little puzzles and or the books that you could make something out of it because it opened your mind you know and I always liked opening my mind as much as I could like to learn a new concept that you never thought of possible and you think about it and it's like wow that really is very profound and it's very like interesting and it's like wow it could actually happen you know if you start getting that in your head that it is possible then it will be possible and I see that more and more that back in the days I had such limited beliefs that I basically sank myself you know I think a lot of people do that and you don't even realize you're doing it so it's like you do it blindly and then when you realize consciously that you're doing it you can start you can start changing the way you think and protecting yourself if other people won't you know I had a veil for a long time over my mind because I was in a situation environment that was very hostile against people with open mind and want who wanted to think outside the box so I couldn't think that way you know so I just started I started closing my mind and but I did shield it I protected it and there was a lot of things that still happened to me even when I put the veil around me because I'd still I'm an empath I still brought in the wrong people and this article told me you know it tells you how to know you're an empath and then of course we're sensitive souls so we're very sen ultra sensitive and then you'll bring in um, if you don't know how to harness your energy you will bring in people that will just leech off of you and basically steal your energy and put all of their bad stuff onto you and they might not even necessarily realize they're doing it but some people do you know but narcissist types they know but I mean some people do it unintentionally but you are an empath so you just take it on and it's part of you and you connect to that energy and you let it go and the way I would let it go is through crying all of my life I never knew that was what I was doing I loved sitting in a little tub and just crying my eyes out that was like my biggest relief ever like that was the way I cleansed myself from the inside out when I felt unsafe so yeah that's what I did and I'm sorry about the cell it always does that because it just always does this is my bliss I told you about it's a wonderful scent and it's it helps my senses and my upliftedness like I told you I use other things as well um those mint those mints from um the homopathic mints and I use my bliss from time to time I use my neuro sleep so all those are like helping my mind and once you help your mind your soul can benefit as well now these I'm really excited to show you and I'm gonna be getting different ones because this is sold I don't know how long it's good for so it's probably pissed off at me because I stopped using it yeah, things like this can get mad, and then when you do want to use it, it will be like you have to re cleanse it and stuff. It's like crystals, they have that energy too. So, if you have energy and you put out bad vibes, it's going to probably come back to you. This is one of the things my husband and I got into. This is way extreme. Like, it's the called the Elixir of Life or Miss Eye of the Mystic. And this, I think I started taking way too soon because. It really like started giving me a lot of aches and pains. Apparently, when you do Ormus, Ormus is very powerful. So don't do it unless you're really like you've already done other things to get yourself into spirituality. Don't like just go straight to it and then go to the highest thing and then think you're gonna be okay. I actually should have started with the space of grace, which I did at one point. I did a whole thing of it, and that's how I'm gonna show you about an experience I had. It's one of the stories, but, um, yeah, I decided to get this, like, I had done that twice, and I was like, you know, I just want to go straight to this, and, oh, I might try Mother of Abundance next, but this 
my friends was too extreme and I started like having all these odd issues and I could not handle it because my soul was not there yet. I'm okay now because I have evolved a little bit. This I keep, have always kept by me, by my bedside. It's called Elixir of Life Ormus Dream Time. And it's just a little thing you put by your bed and it helps you sleep. Like it helps you to have dreams and stuff. It's kind of cool. I like, I don't know how much it's working, but I do have dreams. So this is another thing. This is my crystal. I believe this is citrine, but I've had a lot of crystals and one of my crystals was a necklace and it was a crystal necklace, crystal, you know, the crystal jewelry. And, you know, I put, will put this on my like stomach or my head sometimes when I do my meditation. So that's what I wanted to show you that for. But I had this crystal necklace I wore all the time because I had to wear it when I went around people so it would absorb the energy and then expel it out. And this particular necklace, I didn't realize was so freaking powerful. And because I'm so powerful, it would take in all the negative energy I was at that I had in me. And I was at this motel and come to find out later, we felt it was haunted or had some odd situation there. And apparently it's on a haunted website now. So yeah, it's haunted. And it was haunted at the time. And we heard the, some of the spirits in the other room. We would literally hear them eating like dishes moving around in there. And it sounded like people were like having meals or something at certain times and stuff. And it was so weird. And my husband and I talked to the main people in charge downstairs. And one of the people came up and was like, there's nobody there. And, and we were like, yeah, there is. And she went in the room and she showed that there was nobody there. She didn't show us, but she, yeah, yeah, she actually, apparently they found out about it now. Yeah. She went in there and said, no, there's nobody there. Like we were hearing it at at, right before she went in there. And, <laughs> and we were like, yeah, there's somebody in there. And she's like, no. And at the time I thought, well, that person probably just in cahoots with the motel people. Maybe they're doing smuggling or something of illegal immigrants, you know? We weren't sure, but come to find out later, other people have heard the same type of stuff, so it's not just us. There's been murder, like people, somebody actually died there when we were staying there, too. And he was apparently in his room for like a while before they came and took him out. So yeah, some of these places, you, you have to realize they have like a lot of history. And there will be, there's like a lot of bad things that's happened in some of these types of places. So they can have... um spiritual stuff and if you're a spiritual type person you will definitely sense it and I think what was happening at the time because I had that necklace on when I was at this motel I wonder if a spirit like used that as literally a um almost a conduit of sorts like it literally went into my freaking necklace and started like putting it started putting these waltz right where the necklace was and I was like have at times I would have hard time breathing and I could hardly breathe like I would wake up and I would gasp for breath and so eventually I stopped like having it on when I went to bed but it was scary and that was one of the first times I believe that I started having my um breathing issues where I would gasp for, well, no, I did. I had it when I was at the Brentwood because that was when my sleep apnea really kicked up. But yeah, that was a really scary. Another time I actually did have gasping for breath where I woke up like that was because I was at this other motel and I'm not sure, but it might be that way too. But I also think I was doing a lot more meditation at that time. And, um, there was this woman that lived there, and she's a drug addict. Well, we're pretty sure she was. She's also a prostitute. And um, she was banging on all the doors, going down the row, wanting someone to give her a ride. 
And the thing was, is that night I had had my breathing issues. Like I woke up and I literally had to like get on, lay on the floor and do my breathing. Like I sometimes would do because I started doing that whenever I had my breathing issues, I would do that. And I had this oddest dream about like I was about to die and it felt really real and about this woman like she was looked like she felt like she was it felt like she was there and later on we met this woman and we were the ones that helped take her to this other other hotel down the road yeah, and Grandmark. yeah we were at Grandmark and um she went to their different little uncle she went she just yeah, she acted like it was side, uncle she, bob uh, out of side 28 street way over to the uh uh, Red Roof Inn. Yeah. And um, she had to meet Uncle Bob. Yeah. yeah that's what Bob she <laughs> She When she came back, though, she was in a way different state of mind. Yeah. And that's why we believe she was also getting drugs. And she was getting money from her different guys. Because she had to get, like, money from... She was going from different rooms and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, there's people like that in these places. But anyway... We didn't really ask questions, but she did have very much more slurred speech, and she was talking like like a melon miles a minute. She wasn't really talking in any con like normal state of mind like she w had been. So I was like, okay, should we take her to the hospital or take her home? We ended up taking her home, and later that night, the ambulance was right by her door, and there was police there. And, um, yeah. I don't know what happened to her to say, but she was gone. She, we never saw her again. And that was really weird that I had that odd nightmare dream right before I met her. And she mo more than likely might may have died from drug issues, from lack of breathing issues. So I might have been f literally feeling what she felt like when she died. That's what I'm thinking. I also, at that same motel... I um was just doing some of my stuff and I had been meditating and then I was just looking through some of my stuff. I was in still a very clear headed mind. I was using crystals a lot more back then, like I said, and we'd do our incense and um I would literally lay there and then I'd do my videos from YouTube. Sometimes I'd put my headset on and just listen to the music and let it like go through me. And um I sat up and I was like just doing my stuff and I heard somebody say, my precious. <laughs> and I was like, Isaac, do you have to be weird like that? Like, why are you saying my precious? Like, he always would say odd things. So I just assumed he had said it again, you know, because he would say, make up these odd quotes. And he's like, that time he was like, I didn't say anything, honey. And I was like, yeah, you just said my precious. And he was like, no, I didn't say anything, but I was thinking it. And I was like, <laughs> that sent like chills down my, down my spine because I was like, you gotta be, you gotta be kidding me. Like, what did I do? I just read Here's your mind. Your spine. How do you think I felt? I've actually read my thoughts. <laughs> like, it was, he was like freaked because like I knew what he was thinking. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was like. Yeah, that was uh, one of the freaky moments. I actually read somebody's thoughts like that was the first I ever did anything like that and um I must say it was very surreal like it literally sounded like he had said it though I, like I to this day I, like at times I was like honey you're just fooling with me and he's like no I'm not <laughs> like it's hard to believe you know stuff like that is like you don't think that it can just happen to normal people, but, you know, one thing I do believe is if you can do it once, you can do it again. And I think it's in the state of mind you're in. I've come to realize that, like, a lot of things are your states of mind and where you are mentally. Like, if something happened to you, then you have to get, like, back to that state of mind to recall things. And, you know, that's why I don't think I'll ever remember my sexual abuse because I was raped. More than likely, I was drugged as well. 
So if you are drugged and have all this or have alcohol, which Ruby, no, my mom, my birth mom might have put in my bottle or in some bottle or sippy cup um, to get me that way, um, then you can't, it's not as easy to tap into unless you go back to that state of mind, which explains why when I went to Holland and I was fucked up, I was like literally in another world. And whenever I get intoxicated or get really far gone or I have certain drugs in me, I'm not there. Like I'm literally somewhere else in my body. My soul goes out of my body. Yeah. And I don't like that other part of me comes out. And I think that's what happened at the, at the hospital. Like, people said I was doing things that I don't remember. I don't remember talking to anybody and this guy, and I had a whole conversation. Like, I don't remember things like that because I wasn't there. Like, something else was in me. And, yeah, people can call it split personality if you want, but, you know, I still to this day don't know what happened. But consciously, I was awake and actually answering his questions and talking to him. He thought I was his best buddy. When I went to the mental hospital. It's weird when you have somebody do that and you don't even remember even seeing them. Like, I, that was the first time, like, consciously I saw that guy was when we went to the mental place. And he came over to me and started, like, talking to me like we were, we knew each other. And that's when I was like, um, yeah. At the time I was pretending like I knew what he's talking about, but I had no, I had no idea. Like, I didn't even know what he looked like. So I was like, and then Isaac told me later, oh, yeah, that's that guy that, like, sat next to you when you were um, at the hospital. So I was like, oh, okay. I guess Isaac would left a couple times, and this guy would just talk to me. I don't even know what the heck he said, so... <laughs> To this day, like, he could have been, like, saying the oddest shit, and I wouldn't have even known. Isaac probably doesn't know, because he would, he would leave sometimes, so. <laughs> and, yeah, one thing my husband does know, though, is that when he leaves me, and I'm alone with some odd guy, I get scared. So the fact that I wasn't scared being alone with this guy should have been, like, his hit and a half. <laughs> that it was not me. In my conscious state of mind. Uh, you were something else. Because, yeah, remember, I wouldn't always get trippy when you want to leave. Like, I don't like being left alone, especially with somebody I don't even know. Like, sometimes I get scared. And because I've had weirdos in, in experience who, when he's gone, they start being weird with me. And one of his doctors even was trying to hit on me when he left to go to use the bathroom. So, yeah, I have, like, my reservations when I'm left by myself. I don't, it, consciously, in my own self, I get nervous because I'm small and petite. I can't do much to these guys. And I know that guy wasn't really that big, but, you know, <laughs> I was stuck in this bed, so. And, but I was okay with him. That was one of my state of minds where I guess whatever self was talking to him was just fine. So I have, like, different selves come out, if you haven't noticed. It's like, I don't know. I, I think there is part of me that is like that. And probably there's a little girl that's been raped in me, too. I don't know which, who, she, you know, I don't know her. Because consciously, I'm myself. I'm this reserved person that I've kind of become. But sometimes in me, yes, I get, like, I get feisty. <laughs> I get worked up. You all know if you're on my Facebook. I get worked up. I get, like, annoyed and aggravated at different people and if they don't bring out their truths. Yeah, I'm that, I guess I'm, like, I'm very headstrong. But I have, I was from Mascalero Apache. That's my tribe, my Native American tribe. So, and I was born Aries. I'm, I'm a leader. I'm a leader sign, and we're fire. So you put all that together and it's not some passive little doormat that I was told to be most of my life. It's somebody that actually can be aggressive and wants to take charge, wants to help improve people. I never want to like just 
take charge and then totally screw over the other people around me. I, I was never like that. I just believe in taking some kind of leadership, especially in this world, because think about it. You got people that really don't know how to lead in this world. And there's a lot of people that don't really care to back up the little guy, you know. And if I see injustice, I have to say something like it comes out like if, even if I don't mean for it to sometimes I just it'll just happen and I'll just start saying stuff and getting all worked up because, you know, it's flowing through my body like I'm a conduit or something just bringing some message to this these groups of people that are ganging up against one person or this group of people that wants to hate on this group of people. Yeah, I don't like bullies and I don't like that mentality where everybody thinks one person did everything. Like, I think that's crap because there's always two sides to a story. So with that said, yeah, that is like all my beliefs in a nutshell. Like, I believe that you can grow. I always will keep growing. The book that started me on this journey is Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. And at first it was hard for me to grasp, especially the concept that there is no hell. And as a Christian, I was raised to believe that. I was raised to believe that we are going to go either to heaven or to hell. And you are a sinner and you need repentance and this and that, and that there's only one or the other, you know, it's not, there's no in between, and it's either good or bad, purgatory? and Catholics believe in purgatory, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't taught all of that, so it was really hard for me, let alone for Isaac, Isaac had a really hard time fighting those principles at first, and we like got into fights at times, but eventually we both agreed and we both realized that, yeah, there's a lot of things that um, that we don't know about our universe. And there's so many infinite possibilities. And it was cool to watch the movie of Conversations with God. And we I read all three books, which is, is so, yeah, and it's so easy to like read. And he would give emails and tell you something about your life and a lot of times when i read when i'd read one of them it would somehow hit home right at that situation it's it was unreal and that's what i want to tell you about synchronicity synchronicity is cool it's like real and i never thought it was before but if you think about it once you start realizing about the number numbers and numerology which fascinates me um you'll see it in your life and if you look for it, you'll find it. Um, one of the things that happened to us, spiritually, both of us, um, is that the, and when we were at Grandmark still, the this is when it started really happening, because it would happen all the time. The microwave at a certain time at night would come on to 310. And it would always come on at 310. And it would start, like, going, like, going haywire. Like, the numbers would go all, like, crazy, what, what, um, crazy, you know, whatever. It would be like crazy and it would just like fritz out and it would start going it go beep 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 It would start like acting so crazy and we were like, What the fuck? It's freaking like it's possessed. And it was like so freaking crazy and I was like, Oh my gosh, what the heck? And it was like we would, like, have to sometimes literally go and, turn like, unplug the freaking microwave because it wouldn't stop. It was, like, 310, 310, 310. I was, like, what the heck? And so, finally, I looked up the number for 310, and it talks about your guardian angels. And to stay on the path and that you're in the, your way and that they're there to guide you. And I was, like, Wow. Like, that's the message it was trying to tell us. And, you know, we've had that a couple times here, too. Like, at this place it, with our new microwave. So, it's like, it's not just, like, in our head. It's not just there. It's not just a malfunction. It's happened in multiple places. So, it's not just that. And I do believe that things can, they spirits can use your things, you know. 
And it gets annoying, though, when they do because, like... Oh, and one other thing I wanted to talk about until before I finish here, because I'm, like, talking my ear off, is about our our dealings with animals. I feel that we've come a long way. Like, we've so come far with the animals. It's, like, really, really crazy. When we first started this kind of our journey, it was crazy because we, we lost multiple cars to, like, animals. We would hit them. Mostly deers. But we even had one time, one of our cars literally had, like, this, even this bird, like, go right into our freaking windshield. And that was so, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, we even killed a bird now. Like, it got really scary. Like, we were just hitting all these animals. We were like, how the heck are they coming out of the blue? And people would be like, geez, you lost another one to some animal you hit? And we weren't trying to, but it was like, how the heck? Like, we were getting scared. And then I started, we started paying more attention to the animals, and we started talking to them. And basically... We would actually tell them, you know, get out of the road. You're going to get hurt. And it was cute because this one time there was this mom and her baby. <laughs> we thought this one was really cute. Because there's like the corner of Lincoln Lake Road and uh, that, I think it was called 18 Mile Road. Yeah. That was pretty cool, that one. And she just looked at us like, she, she, like, looked at us. I think the baby was, like, still going across. And we're like, get out of the road. Stay safe. Be safe. And she just, like, looked at us like she knew exactly what we were saying. And we were like, okay. <laughs> and a lot of times, like, nowadays, we will go by and there are, like, there literally will sometimes be, like, tons of deers. Like, they'll be all over the field. And we've seen them everywhere. Like, we've even seen them in the city. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to hit another one again. I just know it. And lately, though, we are always careful, a lot more careful and, like, way more vigilant. I think that was our spiritual evolution in deers because, you know, to realize and be more caring and more in touch with the animals. And that's what we do. And, you know, that's what I believe that was for, was for us to grow in that way and to realize and to start talking to the animals and realize they talk back, you know. And they can kind of sense what you're saying. I do feel that. This is our little incense thing. It's our little dragon one. And these are our, um, these are our two favorites, was cannabis Canvas and opium. opium. They are so good smelling. They're yeah. like, we all, we sometimes will put them on because it's just it gets us high, it makes it makes us in a better state of mind it helps with our headaches too yeah and these are cds that i had i had gotten oh and one of the times i gotta tell you about my time where i had a um regression therapy like i had an actual um i had a past life aggression oh, regression yeah. therapy i have to tell you about that that was we drove all the way to iowa just for me to do that it was like a few hours, like three hours long um thing. And I like discovered some of myself and she gave me a she CD. A job she was really good and she was so sweet too. But yeah, I have to tell you about that one. This is my chakra balance CD. It helps to, like to align your stuff. This is, I always would get these self-hypnosis types because I liked them because they help like, this one is for attract wealth and success. This is my astral projection CD. And this is my celestial zen. That was a really cool one. We haven't played them in a while. No, we should play we them every now and then. Them. It has really cool ones in the back. Because I got into doing YouTube ones mainly. But yeah, yeah these are pretty cool too. Yeah, I shared our, our Ormus stuff. Yep. And we're wanting to get back on Ormus too. Yeah, but the so one I need to get fun. is that mother of abundance. <laughs> yeah, he likes being on it too. Especially the one that helps regenerate my lover. <laughs> well, quick prayer her. We will mm -hmm. be letting you go and... We got to have some chow. Hope we're that you start, sausages. We hope you start your own journey too. And you can share your experiences in the comments below. Peace out. Peace. See ya.